You know, when I talk here on the channel about all of the problems we're facing in this country, some people might not realize that a lot of these problems are global. This is not just uh, contained to the United States. You know, it's not like it's just us that are spending more money than we have and getting into crazy amounts of debt. It's not like it's just us that are facing a recession. In fact, some, com some countries are already in recession right now. You know, it's not just us that tries to print our way out of all of our troubles and just you know run up the national debt increase inflation and hope that that fixes everything this is a worldwide problem guys that's why some people say well even though things are so bad here it could be worse when you look at other countries and that's actually true when we look at our neighbors to the north in canada okay their consumer debt levels just hit two and a half trillion in the second quarter of 2024 and their credit card debt is at the highest level that we've seen in 17 years. Think about that for a minute. Highest level in 17 years. Well, about 17 years ago was the big 2008 housing market crash, which was also global. There were global problems. It's not like everywhere saw home prices come down during this time frame, but we had a global recession. Everyone was affected by it. So you think it's a coincidence that Canadians are seeing the biggest increase in their credit card debt since that time frame? Probably not. So their consumer debt level over there as a total for the coal country is at two and a half trillion and their credit card debt level is at 122 billion. So us here in the United States makes that look like nothing. Okay, we just hit like 1.2 trillion last month, guys. So we are so much further ahead of the Canadians when it comes to credit card debt. It's not even funny. Of course, Canada is a lot smaller country and you're just not going to see as much debt because there's not as many people to go into this kind of debt. So I think it's no coincidence at all that these debt levels are the highest since 2007. Canada has even bigger problems than we do when it comes to their housing market because number one of how overvalued the house is there it makes our houses look cheap that's how bad it is but besides that they have to renew their mortgages every three to five years in a lot of cases and a lot of the mortgages that were signed during covid are now going to be up for renewal at a time when consumer debt is at all-time highs guys but people are already completely maxed out with their debt and they're supposed to be able to take on a new mortgage at today's interest rates you know at, at those home prices very unlikely. Check out this bird. It's standing there watching and waiting for the fish to come out. He's right by the live bait stand. <laughs> but here's the thing. Just like I've been telling everybody what's going to happen here when they start lowering interest rates, lowering the rates isn't going to fix anything because they've already been lowering rates in Canada and it ain't going to be enough to help all these people that are going to have to renew their mortgages soon and get into, into even higher debt levels because those rates are still higher than they were pre-pandemic and everyone is going to be taking a hit on that and this is going to exacerbate problems for canadians this is exactly what we're going to see happen here guys it's already a preview of what's going to happen here because you know as people have to refinance their mortgages there now a lot of that money that was going towards paying down their credit card bill or paying for things for their family or paying for things for their pets whatever is now going to have to go towards a higher monthly mortgage or rent payment and that just decreases spending in other areas of the economy and even though we don't have this problem here in terms of people renewing their mortgages every three to five years we do have the issue of people voluntarily refinancing their mortgages in hopes to pull cash out of the property in hopes to use that equity today and hope that they're going to be able to continue seeing their home value go up so they can just keep pulling money out and pulling money out in fact i reported just a week or two ago how we're seeing HELOCs tick up to the highest level that we've seen also since the last big recession and the last big housing crash. I mean, there's, this is not a coincidence. And so guess what? If people already are stretched thin right now and they still gonna have the same amount of expenses or actually their expenses go up, that means more things are gonna have to be financed in the future. More people are gonna be getting credit card loans. More people are gonna be taking loans out against their properties and it's just, a massive debt problem guys and it's not like i blame people for using the credit card if that's the only thing they have available i've been in that situation before in my own life too it is what it is guys like if you 
need to put food or the rent or whatever on the credit card to make ends meet this month, that's all you can do, fine. But you need to look at ways to increase your income or lower your expenses or preferably both in that situation. You don't want to be somebody who's continually using debt to pay for your, your life and having no way to get out of it because eventually it's going to catch up to you and you're going to lose that battle. Canada is also a country that's seeing their unemployment going up. So unemployment going up, consumer debt going up. We have a lot of things in common with our neighbors to the north. And that's actually worse there when it comes to unemployment. Canada's unemployment rate is at 6.4% and one year ago it was at 5.5%. So Actually, Canada, if you wanted to apply the same SOM rule that we have here in the U.S., has also triggered the SOM rule there. They've seen their unemployment go up more than 0.5% in a 12-month average time frame. This is a global problem, guys. We are all going to be facing this at the same time. And it really is the perfect storm, you know, when you see people having to refinance their mortgages at the same time, debt levels are at all time highs, at the same time, unemployment rising. This is a pretty wicked combination for a country to endure. And that's why over here, they're trying to make things look as good as possible and basically trying to convince people that it's not going to happen here in the U.S. You know, we're better than everybody else. And somehow we are going to dodge this recession while everyone else takes a hit. No way, guys. One of those feel good stories that just came out that a lot of you probably already heard is how the GDP numbers for the second quarter were revised upwards from 2.8 to 3 percent. So we should all jump for joy on that because that means the economy is booming. In fact, I saw a couple other YouTubers with video titles out there saying how the economy is booming now because of this upward revision. <laughs> this comes right after the big downward revision we saw in the amount of jobs created. So their government's gonna look at this and say, well, look, even though we had this huge downward revision in the jobs created, we still have this booming economy with a 3% GDP right now. Although the annual GDP rate is not nearly as good as the quarterly growth at 1.4%. So what's happening? Well, they say stronger consumer spending contributed to the upward revision to the second quarter growth estimates. Spending was revised up to a 2.9% rate from the initial 2.3% and spending was up 1.5% in the first three months of the year. But if you really look into the details on this, things are not nearly as good as they try to make it sound, guys. And here's why. Because on inflation, they say that the core personal consumption expenditure index was revised slightly down to 2.8% from the 2.9%, but that gross domestic income rose 1.3% in the second quarter, the same as in the first quarter. So we also have our own perfect storm brewing here in that people are addicted to debt, whether by choice or by necessity. And this is all happening at a time when the unemployment rate here is also going up substantially. And we also have all time high credit card and personal debt. So we're pretty much in the same boat as our Canadian friends. And the thing that's just laughable about all this to me is they say that the rise in consumer spending in the second quarter helped alleviate fears that the economy was slowing fast. Federal Reserve officials still believe that the economy can settle into a soft landing. These guys are so clueless that they cannot put A and B together and realize that the reason why consumer spending is up is because inflation is up. So people have to spend more money to buy the same goods and services as they did before. So it's not really a big shocker that consumer spending is up when inflation is up. How could it not be? It's not like overnight people are going to stop needing groceries and stop needing to buy car insurance and stop needing to pay their rent or things like that. All that goes on. Life goes on regardless of inflation. So yeah, no wonder consumer spending is up because we have no choice but to spend more if we want to buy the same stuff. They say, oh, you know, demand is strong for both goods and labor, and it's encouraging to see less evidence of a recession. You know, today's numbers potentially argue against the idea of continuous rate cuts by the Fed. So now the Fed's going to look at this and say, well, maybe things are better than we thought. Maybe we don't have to keep cutting rates and we'll do one cut rate cut in September and hang around on that for a while. <laughs> It's all just a joke, man. It really is. And you know, to kind of illustrate my point on how when you have the GDP up and consumer spending up due to inflation, 
The typical down payment on a home is the perfect example of this, guys. This is a great analogy to show you how this works in the real world because Redfin just came out with a report talking about how the typical down payment is at $67,500 for a house and that's up 14.8% from just one year ago. That's a version of consumer spending, right? People have to spend money for the down payment of that house. And the reason why people have to put a higher down payment is because the home prices are more expensive in many cases and the interest rates are high. And when they have those two factors combined, it makes the price of the house or your monthly payment high. So people are forced to put a higher down payment if they want to pay the same monthly payment that they did a year ago, correct? And Redfin reported that this is the 12th consecutive month that the median down payment rose year over year. Well, what a surprise. Maybe because the rates have been high and the prices have remained high. So people are trying to put down more money to keep their payments as low as possible. Another version of people needing to spend more money because of inflation. In this case, housing inflation. So it's not like people wanna put these higher down payments. It's not like people are all of a sudden richer and they're like, yeah, I have more, I have extra money laying around. Let me just put a higher down payment on the house now because I'm feeling good about my finances. No, that's not what's going on. People are putting down these higher down payments because they have no choice. It's either that or I can't afford to buy the house. And you know this, why? Because most people that are putting down these down payments are getting help from family members to put down a higher down payment than they normally could. Redfin quotes this in their story, guys. This isn't me making this up or just kind of, you know, guessing at what's going on. They're telling us in their data, this is what people are reporting. They say that the typical home buyer's down payment was 18.6% of the purchase price in June, which is the highest level in over a decade. So people are doing this in order to lower the monthly payments. They're saying, hey, mom and dad, I need a loan from the bank of mom and dad. Otherwise, I can't afford the monthly payment of my house. And of course, this is happening for a multitude of reasons. Because of higher home prices, people need to put more money down to make the payment more affordable. Because of interest rates being higher, people need to put higher down payments for the same exact reason. But also, people who sold their homes recently and had a lot of equity might have had some extra money to put down as well. And you also have all cash purchases making up a third of home sales right now. So people who can afford to pay all cash can naturally afford to put a higher down payment in escrow before the deal closes. And this also brings up an important point about the housing market. Like a lot of people see that prices are still high and homes are still selling in their area. And you have to understand, these are the people who are buying guys. It's people that have family money that can easily get access to this big down payment. We're talking, 68 grand on average, okay? It's like the average down payment now, the median down payment that people are putting down, $68,000. Do you have that kind of cash? If you don't, well, then you're not in the club, okay? So those are the people who are buying these houses, first of all, or people whose family have this kind of money and people who just have so much money that they can afford to pay all cash. That's one third of the purchases right now. So it's also not a surprise that we're seeing home purchase levels at the lowest level ever, essentially, because the only people who are buying right now are the ones who are financially well off enough to be able to do so. Another point from Redfin's story that illustrates this is the fact that FHA loans have fallen to this lowest level that we've seen in two years. Okay, FHA loans are at only 13.7% of mortgage US home sales in June, which is the lowest since August of 2022. And a year ago, it was 14.9%. So people that don't have a lot of money are typically the ones who utilize an FHA loan and those sales are declining. VA loans is the same thing, okay? VA loan sales made up 6.7% of all mortgage home sales in June, down from 6.9% a year ago. So the people that have basically no money for a down payment are the ones who are pulling back and the people who still have a lot of money and are flush with cash are still making purchases at today's prices. And that's something else you have to understand, like pretty much no matter how bad things get here, even if we do go into the next Great Depression here in this country, there's still gonna be people that have that kind of money to go out and spend on these houses, okay? The difference is gonna be that those houses will be a lot cheaper because the people who can't afford to keep those houses 
will be forced to sell them and the people with all the money are going to have the time of their life picking up those bargain deals. So that's something I want everyone who watches my channel to understand that no matter how bad things get, you're still going to see bullish stories on the economy to make things look good, right? Because there's always going to be that subset of people that are resilient and are able to withstand any sort of financial problems we might see. But unfortunately, that's not the case for some Goodwill stores. One of you guys sent me this story about some Goodwill stores in Northwest Washington State closing down due to safety concerns. You know, I talked about this the other day with Target closing down their stores because of crime and now even Goodwill, guys. They even note right here in their story that they're doing this because of escalating theft, safety concerns, and rising rents have made it increasingly difficult to maintain a secure and sustainable environment for both employees and shoppers. And the last days for these stores that will be open is going to be September 22nd. So they're closing right around the corner. And to give you an idea of how bad crime is getting in these areas, Vice President of Retail at Goodwill said that both locations have experienced a troubling rise in property damage, break-ins, and safety concerns for their employees. And then when you throw in the rising rent costs, it's made it unsustainable to continue operating. And it's like, how do the landlords have the balls, right, to increase people's rents in neighborhoods where crime is on the rise? <laughs> I mean, this is just too funny, guys. Like, you would think that as a landlord, like, well, you know, things are getting kind of sketchy around here. I really want these guys to stay. Maybe we should try to keep the rents low. No, we're just going to raise it and have another empty property, more blight in the neighborhood, which leads to more crime and more problems, which has already been proven to happen in different places across the country. So the only good thing is that all the employees at these Goodwill stores are going to be offered positions at other Goodwill stores. And of course, they invite their shoppers to go ahead and shop at other close by locations. Like, yeah, okay, guys, that's always going to be the case I said, you know, Walmart does the same thing. They tell people, oh yeah, we're gonna hire you at another location if you still want a job. But where's the next closest Goodwill? 10, 15, 20 miles away? You know, who's gonna wanna take that commute, especially at today's gas prices, to go work there? To me, when, when companies do this, it's just a half-hearted attempt to look good in front of everybody. You know, it's a good press move, you know, offering to, for their employees to keep their jobs. But in reality, most people are gonna probably try to find a new job closer to where they live than to drive far away and work for the same company. So if all this isn't a sign that things are deteriorating fast, I don't know what is, guys. Just when you think it can't get any worse, it just does. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the doom and gloom over here at Loch Lomond Marina. I almost forgot to tell you where I was. Last time I was here, I walked along the outer perimeter of this place, and this time I took you the other way. It's a beautiful place to shoot videos and uh, talk about the problems that we're seeing in the world. And for the record, guys, I just wanna make something clear for everybody who made it this far into the video. I like talking about these type of things because number one, I know it's what you're interested in. You know, you guys constantly uh, want to see the latest on you know, how things are falling apart in the world, and I'm happy to report that to you. But I think it's important to pay attention to this stuff because some people are like, oh, you only talk about the negative, you never talk about the positive. Well. All of these negatives, if you're aware of them, can lead to positives in your own life. That's how I view all of this stuff. Like if you know all this stuff is happening, you can make the right financial moves, the right investment moves, the right job moves for your career, knowing what's coming down the pipeline. And to me, that's a big advantage and a positive for people who are willing to listen to things like this. So. Thank you for everybody who watches and supports the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.